Mm, look at that. We're back. So today in the afternoon slash morning session of New York, I had a fantastic trade on the NASDAQ futures and I want to run it down with you guys because it was a little bit tricky to start off the day, but then we ended it off absolutely fantastic. And I also recorded the entire thing live for the community. I thought, why not share it with you guys and fully break it down? Something I'm going to be doing and introducing to the community a lot more is live trading in the sense of people can join a Zoom link and watch me trade live. They simply come in, see everything I'm doing live and you can take the position with me if you want to take them. But more importantly, you get a full insight into my brain. I talk through everything I'm doing, the psychology, the execution, everything will be within the community. And we'll also do these trade recaps once a week, once every two weeks for you guys here on YouTube. So let's dive straight in. All right, guys, so I'm going to be voicing over the recording that I had yesterday and try to run you guys through it. So basically yesterday, my bias on the NASDAQ was short. We were in a, we were coming into a massive level of resistance. We were breaking lower on the higher time frames. We were throwing big wicks to the highs. Um, and then all I was simply doing was following that down for a little intraday scalp back down. So let's get straight in. So I was already in a short position. What I was looking to do was simply take this back down to where my wick is to come and take up the liquidity down there. Um, would have been a really nice intraday trade. However, on the five minute here, we can see we're throwing massive wicks to the lows, which is something that I didn't really like. So I actually believe I cut this position at break even because I could also see that we had this big level of resistance. We had that previous strong hourly candle closure and we could easily push up, maybe take out this high again before then running back down. So back down to the five minute. We've just broken back up. I cut this position here at maybe minus 10, minus $10 and also notice that we have this head and shoulders forming here as well. We've broken that support. We've come back up. We've retested. So my overall bias is still bearish. However, I do think we can catch a bear entry. So that was the reason for closing my shorts early. And I'm just going to look to re-enter once we push up a little bit higher. But look at this. We've created a nice double bottom. We have lots of liquidity sitting down there. And that for me is now a very easy, easy target. And that's the reason I flick between the NASDAQ and US 500. They're correlated very, very well. But there'll be times where one will create a double bottom and one will liquidate the low. And in that case, price won't need to take out the other one. But as we we can see here on the NASDAQ, we haven't taken out any lows. On the S&P, we've actually created a beautiful double bottom. So what do we have sitting down here? Lots of liquidity. So this is now giving me even more confidence that I'm going to look to jump in shorts at any opportunity that the market gives me. And I'm very, very confident that this is a high probability trade that we're going to come down and take out these lows. So all I'm simply doing now is looking for more short opportunities. Is price giving me signs that we could drop low? We're coming into a very key level of support. Broken, come back up, test that as resistance. So we could be could be coming down that little bit lower. So all I'm doing is simply waiting for the next five minute candle to close to kind of give me a little bit more clarity as we're still throwing big rejections to the lows, which is showing still that there's a little bit more bullish pressure in the markets. And look at this, pretty much what I'm saying is uh, we could push up a little bit higher before dropping lower and I didn't want to sit through this drill. And so I'm getting ready here to take another short as we're starting to find some resistance. So I take a nice short there. Only trading one contract at the minute, but one contract is all enough as you guys will see. Look at this, we start to throw really nice wicks got this massive resistance. And look here, I'm just demonstrating that we have the possibility to come up that little bit higher. And if we do, then that may be another short opportunity. But as we as it stands right now, this is also a lovely, a lovely place to want to take the shorts. So here we have a few five minute candles have gone. And now we can see that five minutes pushing down really, really well. Ran into quickly $155 profit. Not too bothered about that. I'm not going to be taking it till it hits my downside target um, because this could easily just be, a, again, another test of support to push higher. So I was managing my positions very, very aggressively here, given that we have that level sitting above to create that right shoulder before dipping lower. So managing aggressively here, I believe after this close with a wick, I look to pretty much say to myself that I'm going to be closing this at break even because if we push up higher again, I don't want to be involved in this trade. I don't want to sit in the drawdown. Look at that. Rejecting. I'm getting ready. I pause it here. So yeah, there you go. Closed at break even. Again, we're just throwing big wicks to lows. There was no real reason for me to want to hold the shorts. If the candle had closed bearish, then I'd be more than happy to hold. But look at this. This was right at the New York open. And what we were seeing on the five minute time frame was a lot of indecisiveness, a lot of doji candles, but also not a lot of volume. And if we don't have a lot, an awful lot of volume at the New York open, I'm going to be a lot more conservative. Now, here is where I click play. And as you guys can see here on the S&P, look at that. We've created a triple top. And that's very, very interesting because if we create triple tops, what do we know we have sitting above there? We have a lot of liquidity. However, when we go back to the NASDAQ, we can see we didn't actually create that triple top. We actually took out the highs and then dropped with a nice strong five minute candle close. And the second that five minute candle closed, that's when I saw the bearish pressure kick in. And then that's when I then jumped back in with the shorts. So straight in with the shorts, just took one contract. If we come up and retest higher, I then that's where I enter another contract. If both the NASDAQ and the S&P had triple tops, then I would not be shorting yet. But the NASDAQ didn't have it. The S&P did. Divergence, 
we take the sell. So more of a momentum trade here. Could have been a little bit more patient and waited for the retest. However, I didn't want to miss this move because I know the way that these futures can move and they can move very, very fast. So pause it. And here I'm basically just running through the community telling them, look, we still have the possibility to come up higher. We've rejected this support. We've now broken that support. And what do we want to do? We simply want to wait for the retest and then go short again. You have a level of support, it breaks. You close your longs, you go short. It's very, very simple. Strong five minute close on the S&P. Strong five minute close on the NASDAQ. I'm very happy with this position. Look at that, running down $135. Starting to pull back up. Entered another contract on the retest of that broken support. Came back up, resistance. Lovely place to enter another position. Looking for the downside targets to come down and take out their blows. Five minute, rejecting really, really well. Fantastic, fantastic level. And then boom, there it is, look at that. The five minutes continued to creep up a little bit more, but we were respecting that level. Then my stop loss was based off if we would close back above that level. So that first level I had was a very key level of support, broke resistance. If the next five minute closed above that and retested, I would have cut my positions at break even and then looked to go long. However, we rejected it really, really well. And then followed from that was a beautiful, strong five minute close where we ran into an instant $550 profit. And before I could secure that, I took one contract off there and then I took the full position off there for just over $500, which was an absolute fantastic position. And then look at that, the S&P took out the liquidity exactly as expected. So downside targets were met and that was the trade absolutely crushed. And then I ended up the day up $700 just trading the Nasdaq futures on the five and 15 minute time frame, getting in and out, securing the profits, not trading crazy huge contracts, but trading very beautiful setups, liquidity grabs, breaks and retests. And that is how you can start banking positions like this. So hope you guys enjoyed this quick trade recap. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you all in the next one.